Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a large, fat stack of hardcore fantasy news to get to. But before we get into that, I want to address what happened at Worldcon involving the Hugo Awards and the SJV segment specifically. So for those of you unaware, Worldcon is a convention that is traditionally held in New Zealand, and the SJV segment is specifically about the New Zealand Sci-Fi Fantasy Awards. It's kind of just like, oh, it's held in New Zealand, so they have this panel, this segment that focuses on awarding New Zealand creators. Now, that's pretty important. Your convention is held in this country. It seems like it would be of highest priority to at least give the local creators some form of platform or boost while you are taking place in their literal land. Well, what ended up happening was that was essentially relegated to a nothing slot, highly compressed, as a retro segment of the Hugo Awards happening taking place, specifically focusing on horror, ran long and it gets worse. They also handed out the wrong voting packet for this specific SJV segment, so people were really confused. A lot of the attendees weren't even aware it was happening because it wasn't promoted well. And finally, this horror segment, they spent quite a bit of time honoring HP Lovecraft. Yeah, Lovecraft's influence is important and we shouldn't just dismiss him altogether, but spending a large chunk of time honoring a very vocal and devout racist and homophobe Maybe just don't do that. Uh, it's not a good look. I'm not one of these people who's saying we need to forget about Lovecraft and his influence. That's no, everyone who has influenced the genre should be learned about, but maybe don't spend time like propping them up and honoring them. That's just strange. He didn't even have like family there accepting awards or anything. It was just like, oh, let's spend time on this guy and let this run really long. And as a result, not bring up many of these smaller creators of this country we're in who could severely benefit from actually being in this SJV segment. So the local scene got left out to dry while they sat around honoring not someone who should necessarily be honored currently. So it's not a good look. Fortunately, something kind of positive has spun out of this, and I'll have all the links to much of this down below, but there's all kinds of Twitter threads now out there that are promoting and trying to bring attention to many of the New Zealand authors and creators who should have been propped up by this SJV segment and gotten some attention. So if you'd like to check out some New Zealand authors, like maybe you've never have before, or you're just curious to see what's going on, check out those links down below. Highly recommend you do. And yeah, not, not the greatest situation. Last minute, fantasy news, cut in. This story has gotten quite a bit larger than when I first started covering it this morning, and I wanted to do it justice, not with like a cell phone video cut in, because that doesn't seem very respectful, but this has spawned many conversations around representation in the industry, how certain authors of color are treated in the industry. There's been a lot of very powerful statements, including an acceptance speech from Rebecca Kwong, where she kind of just went really big and I respect the crap out of it. I'll link to an article in Vulture that has a lot of these details in there, but there is a clear, not really defendable mishandling of this whole ceremony in the Hugo Awards from George R. R. Martin in general. He gave a very long rambly speech. It did not come across well, mispronounced many people's names, which I know I don't have a ton of room to talk on aside from just saying like, I'm severely dyslexic and yeah, I, I should do better. I, in my head for a while, it's kind of like a running joke, but now I realize like that is kind of tied into larger things. So that's gonna be stopping here. And yeah, this is not a good look for Martin. Uh, a lot of idolizing people, many people who should not be idolized. I understand the other side where people are like, well, these people were massively influential to me. That's great. Don't put them on pedestals though. <laughs> <laughs> if someone's a known fascist, racist, or homophobe, can we as a community agree it's okay to go, yeah, I like their work, but let's stop idolizing them and deifying them in these ways? That's probably not the best approach. Anyway, I just, I, it's really late. It's going on 9 p.m. and I'm running on like three hours of sleep, but I want to do a better job of just letting people know this is blowing up into a larger conversation. And it's one that I recommend you look into on your own, but I didn't want to leave this at just my original coverage, which was just focusing on one specific small part. I, I just, I need to go to sleep. So I'm going to edit this and begin uploading it and get it ready for release tomorrow morning when I wake up. But yeah, it's one of those days, guys. Don't worry, the rest of the fantasy news is 
full of jokes and gags if I remember right. How do I not remember my own video? But speaking of conventions and awards, we're gonna go ahead and transition out of this segment and talk about the fact that Neil Gaiman posted his acceptance speech for the Good Omens TV series winning at the Hugo Awards. And he specifically titled the video he posted to Facebook, I recorded this quite certain we wouldn't win the Hugo Award for the Good Omens TV series. I was wrong, we won. This one is for you, Terry. And just that last sentence, like I'm a, I'm a grown man, but <laughs> emotions. I love this, this is great. Neil Gaiman's always a class act and it was just, you know, great to see. But we're actually going to continue the Neil Gaiman wave into what he recently said about the upcoming adaptation of The Sandman, where he said season one will cover preludes and nocturnes and The Doll's House. So that is your big chunk line out segment for season one and what will be covered. A couple other quick takeaways. He said this will be 10 episodes that cover 16 comics with more surprises woven in. So take that as you will, probably slight deviations from the story I'm thinking. And apparently they had almost everything ready to begin production before COVID began being COVID. So yes, it seems they are ready to kick back up once this situation is resolved. And I am quite excited for this Sandman adaptation. Even in the wave of adaptations that have admittedly slowed way down, we are still seeing a lot of interest in Sandman, specifically because it stands out. This is different. It's this gothic, weird, abstract, surreal series that has a huge reputation around it. So I don't think it'll have much of a problem at all, really kind of being a, okay, this will grab people's attention once it's dropped to Netflix. And in Middle Earth TV show news, it seems that there is a rumor flooding the internet right now that Elrond, Galadriel, and Sauron have been confirmed for the show. I originally wasn't gonna cover this, but it is just going everywhere. And more and more people saying that this leak is credible and coming from the OneRing.net Twitter account, which apparently has been accurate many times before. So if this is the case, that's quite exciting, especially because this is going to be Sauron at his quote unquote peak and Elrond and Galadriel when they're still kind of in the middle of this grand second age uh, conflict. So that's going to be pretty amazing. Note. I did properly say Middle Earth show and not Lord of the Rings show because it's still wrong to call this Lord of the Rings show because, you know, it's not really about that. Anyway, what do you think of this potential news? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm pretty excited by it. I kind of already assumed these characters would be and that's why I'm pretty comfortable saying like this rumor is probably true because they'd be crazy not to use these characters. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments down below or that we are getting a Galadriel, Elrond, and Sauron appearance, which I think most people already knew, but now we just know for sure. And I, ooh, before we stop, I do want to also say this kind of actually leads into a lot of the speculation people had around the names of some of the cast members that have been announced, saying like, those names don't appear in the second age. Who are these people? This doesn't make sense. Well, the idea that a lot of them were given fake placeholder names to hide the fact that they're playing Elrond, Galadriel, Sauron seems more likely now. So I'm going to put that out there as well. But moving on to some fantasy quickie news, Rebecca Kwong posted the back cover to the upcoming new Poppy War book, The Burning God, to Twitter. I got asked to cover that, so there you go. Now it's covered. And a new Stephen King, the man himself, book has been announced, titled Later. It is set to be released March of 2021, and the description goes as follows. The book is titled Later and tells the story of Jamie Coughlin, a boy whose unusual ability could aid his single mom and her police detective lover, but only at a terrible cost. Later is being published via Hard Case Crime, Titan Books line of pulp style crime novels. This is the third book King has written for Hard Case Crime, following 2005's The Colorado Kid and 2013's Joyland. So to my King heads out there, look forward to another twisted, dark Stephen King story. Or maybe he'll do a total change to his typical style and this will be a lighthearted family romp. And as a part of Comic-Con at home, Jim Butcher did an interview where there were several notable things he said about Dresden Files, other projects he's working on. It was just a very enjoyable interview and he has his very natural charisma coming through. So if you're a Jim Butcher fan, go ahead and check that on out. My biggest takeaway though from everything he said was how he specifically hit on the topic of, I don't really care how much they change Dresden's appearance for any adaptations. He specifically wants them to just do a good job of embodying his personality and presence from the page. So if that requires an actor who doesn't exactly look like him, that's fine. Before we get into the rest of the fantasy news though, I'm happy to bring you for the first time in a good minute, cause he's been on vacation, a fantasy news weather segment from Green Daniel. You have failed Daniel. I have become one with the transcended fantasy realms. 
You will never force me into another live-action adaptation again. And you also failed as a news host. You haven't even covered the fact that the Hellboy role-playing game is coming down the road. Brought to you by Mantic Games and Dark Horse Comics. No, this is different than the 2019 Kickstarter Hellboy game. Brought to you by the same man who worked on Judge Dredd board game. Step up your game, Daniel. You're falling behind. Great. Tor.com also released an article covering a bunch of upcoming sci-fi fantasy books. So if you'd like to go ahead and see what's coming down the road for the sci-fi fantasy YA community, you can go ahead and check it out in the links down below, just as every story I talk about here. And if you wouldn't mind leaving a like while you're at it, it would help me on the channel and help me eventually overtake Mr. Beast. He's a, he's a YouTuber people talk about. Yeah, let me, let me overtake him in subs. <laughs> and there was a wonderful list posted to the r slash fantasy subreddit of black authors that you should check out if you have not already. It's over 20 authors and the number one spot goes to Octavia Butler, an author I've recently discovered and enjoyed very much so and now I've read two of their works. So as a lot of people have been trying to look for more black authors to read in current times, specifically for the sci-fi fantasy community, this could be an excellent resource link down there. And for my Dune fans, are you ready for some Dune news? Denis Villeneuve sat down in an interview and went over a lot of the upcoming Dune project. Many big takeaways, but one of my favorite things I saw about this, and I very much so agree, was a comment saying, that's the smile of a man who knows his movie's going to be amazing. And it kind of, he kind of gives off that presence like this whole interview. He's just confident in what he's built. And he also, at one point in another interview, said that um, the, his schedule has been crushed by COVID, but he still thinks they're going to hit the original release date. So if we can by then go to theaters, that's something I'm looking forward to. And that's really cool. So for my Dune fans, check out this hour long interview of Denis Villeneuve going over his upcoming Dune adaptation. The guy is just such a great director. I recently rewatched Blade Runner 2049 again, and it just, He's, he's, he's the best working director. Can I say that? Can I just say that? He's the best working director when it comes to a lot of things. In a story I'm sure the gaming community as a whole will have nothing but a positive reaction to, the HBO adaptation of The Last of Us apparently is confirming they're going to take the story in new directions. So take that as you will. Personally, for me, this is just them saying like, look, you know, adapting a storyline straight from a video game to a, a, a HBO adaptation, you're gonna have to change some stuff. You have to move some things around to better adapt that story because one is paced out for a game and that's not necessarily going to be able to lift and straight up put into whatever they're doing over here. That's how I'm taking it, but I'm sure the gaming community has proven to me every time I cover it in fantasy news that they are just the most logical and rational people ever. This isn't sarcasm at all. I specifically want to point out in his quote though, he said, and so the changes that we're making are designed to fill things out and expand, not undo, but rather to enhance. We're creating a new and we're already reimagining what is already there to present a different format. It's kind of a dream come true for me. I'm a little bit scared because a lot of emotion connected to this game are rather intense. I think I'm probably going to hide in a bunker for a while because you can't make everyone happy. I don't blame you. And in the final story we're gonna cover here today, apparently Sam Neil, yes, the star of the Jurassic Park movie, the original one, is returning to the franchise once again. And he is out there right now, according to this article, filming his scenes for Jurassic World Dominion. I, it's always a mixed bag when you have like an older actor, not to be mean, I'm not trying to be ageist here, but like return to the franchise to fill in some role, some part. I don't necessarily know how they're going to incorporate him here. If he's just gonna be like a scientist consulting at some point, or he'll be out there like running alongside the dinosaurs. I'm curious, the original Jurassic Park is a fantastic movie, one of the greats of the genre. So yeah, love that, cool with it. Seeing Sam Neill return, I'm just curious what exactly he'll be doing, and that's all I'll say now at this point. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. If you'd like to join the fantasy conversation, just head on into that Fantasy News Discord server and go ahead and post any stories you'd like to see me cover in that channel labeled Fantasy News. Did I call it a Fantasy News Discord server? My channel's Discord server. Find the Fantasy News channel and post stories in there. And hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, The Boulder, Sakio Art, and Adam Davis.
Thank you guys so much, and I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. Because this is being released on Tuesday, I believe, and that's still the start of the week, I believe.